Britney Spears went from Mickey Mouse Club star to global pop icon. And during the late 90s and early 2000s, she basically dominated the music world with her hit singles, her mesmerizing and fun choreography, her charisma, and her it factor. And she was often compared to one of the world's biggest pop legends, Madonna. Unfortunately, this all came crashing down in ways that we could have never predicted. We witnessed her very public meltdown in 2007, which eventually led to the creation of her involuntary 13-year conservatorship and pretty much complete control by her father, Jamie Spears. So in this video, we're gonna explore Britney's rise to stardom, her long, long fight for freedom, and also her struggle for true love from the lens of human design. But of course, before we get into this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you can be the first to know when we do release fresh new content just like this at the Human Design Academy. For those of you who are new here, my name is Crystal Alferrero. I'm a human design guide and I help people like yourselves make sense of the human design system. And as a millennial myself, Britney Spears was absolutely my favorite pop star growing up. I remember I was either in third or fourth grade when I first heard Baby One More Time, and I have no shame in saying from that moment, I was absolutely hooked. I was that kid that would basically try to copy her choreography whenever I saw her music on TV and was unsuccessful, by the way, because it's not like now where you have tutorials and, um, the ability to basically play back videos over and over again. Anyways, going away from the point, this is all to say that I was very shocked when I would hear Britney Spears come up in the news over and over again, not just for her success, but for her meltdowns. That was really surprising for me, you know, from someone that was painted as this like perfect being that we would put on this pedestal. Um, and, you know, over time and over the years, I feel like I kind of grew up with her. We just saw her condition get worse and worse. And no matter how much we were all rooting for her, it just seemed like it would never end. Like we didn't really see an end to this. And honestly, I didn't even know about her conservatorship until I heard about this whole free Britney movement um, on Instagram one day. And really that's when her downfall and her struggle started to make so much more sense to me. So anyways, if you're ready to dive into Britney's chart, sit back, relax, get out some popcorn if you want, and let's get started. Here we have Miss Britney Jean Spears, who was born on December 2nd, 1981 at 1.30 a.m. in Mico, Mississippi, according to astro.com. And so this gives her a manifesting generator design. So she has a 5-1 a profile and she has sacral authority. She's someone that, um, you know, is designed to discover the work that they love and embrace it. And so for me, it's no surprise that she's a manifesting generator. She has this very strong work ethic that we've seen and um, this impressive endurance to, you know, keep going and push through and um, do the things that she loves. And again, we're going to get more into this as we go through this analysis, but she's someone that's described as just absolutely loving her work as a performer. And even in the middle of her conservatorship, you know, even in the middle of all of her struggles, she had this power, this life force to just keep going, right? Uh, I think she went on two world tours during this time and had that four year residency in Vegas. And she really did put her heart and soul into the work that she did, even if it was forced at times. But I feel like a huge um, part of what made her be able to do this was because she got a huge source of satisfaction from it, right? When everything around her was being controlled and when everything around her was just frustrating and, you know, she's a manifesting generator. And actually she described her not being able to use her personal power, I think in, it was one of the documentaries I was watching, but she would just say she felt angry. Like she would always just feel angry. Um, and yeah, like that was just, that's a sign of her personal power being totally taken away from her. And so the work that she did definitely was a huge source of satisfaction when she was denied any kind of real freedom under that conservatorship. And if you're not familiar with what, <clears throat> sorry, 
with what a conservatorship is. It's basically when the court gives someone else the rights to pretty much control your life, like control your resources, your um, really your personal decisions, whoever is the conservatee. So in this case, Brittany was a conservatee, her father, and I believe, I don't know, maybe there are a couple other people uh, were the conservators and that were responsible for her estate, were responsible for all the financial decisions, the personal decisions. You know, they had control over the work that she, she did as well. And so theoretically, it's because the conservatee is supposedly not supposed to be in the right state of mind, right? Not in the right mind to take care of themselves, to do these things for themselves. Um, and in most cases, conservatees are elderly, you know, the elderly that might have dementia or like maybe minors that aren't able to take care of themselves in certain ways, right? So in Brittany's case, like I said, she's an adult woman. And so it was really surprising that she, or I guess that the courts even ruled for this, right? And basically like she had no control over the money that she made. She had per, like, she had to ask for permission to do basically anything from buying books for her kids, from going out to eat burgers at a restaurant, right? She, need, she needed to wait for approval to do very, very basic things underneath this conservatorship. You know, she couldn't even go for joy rides in her car without permission. She couldn't do a lot of these, like she couldn't see her kids as much as she wanted to. And so it seemed like the one place that she could actually escape and the one place that was a true source of satisfaction for her, other than her, you know, romantic flings, but was through her work, basically, right? Was through the performances. And, you know, again, it was a place of escape in that sense as well. And so I wanted to kick off this, I guess you could say, analysis and just talk about what aspects I see here that make her a born star, right? And really show us who she is today. So I think the first thing that really stands out for me is this channel of the wavelength, right? The 4816, it's a design of talent. And this is someone that, you know, she's basically someone that was born to be a star, born to be talented. And it's not to say that everyone with this channel will be a pop star. <laughs> Obviously not, that's not the case, but this is the energy of someone that has the skills and the depth to develop talent in something, right? Through that repetition, through that um, practice, through that reinforcement and refinement of the things that she's learning and she does. And she's someone that was really good at what she did. She's mastered her craft and she, she knew it, right? There was a quote in one of the declarations she made in fighting her conservatorship. And she said, I am great. She's, I think she said something along, uh, along the lines of, I'm not good at what I do. I'm great at what I do. So she was very, very confident in that arena of her life. She knew, like she had this it, it factor and she knew that she's hardworking. She knew that she was incredible at what she actually did do, right? It was even said, I think, in her Vegas residency that she was the one that was directing everything. She was the one doing the choreography that was teaching the, her dancers, right? And so for me, like, it was really surprising that even though she was capable of doing all of these things and working independently, why is it that she was placed under this conservatorship if she was supposedly not in the right mind, right? So that, again, like, I think that was a big topic of discussion, especially, you know, among the whole Free Britney movement. Um, it didn't really make sense. And again, she's just someone that's far from being a one hit wonder. She's someone that grew into this incredible performer and entertainer. Like maybe she did not have the most amazing voice. You know, some people might argue that, you know, maybe she's not like a Mariah or a Christina, right? She was Britney, but she has this it factor. She is a performer at heart and she was great at what she do, what she does. Um, and she's mastered her work, right? And so we can see here, where are we? Okay. And so she's someone that finds grounding and balance and stability through her skills. We see that it's activated by her conscious earth. Right. So we can see that, um, again, she's someone that finds that balance when she's immersing herself in developing her talents, developing her skills into talents, spending that time, that energy there. Um, it helps her 
ground that that focusing energy into something that is meaningful for her that's satisfying for her and so that would explain why she would still have the enthusiasm so gate 16 is also about enthusiasm right but it would explain why she would have the enthusiasm to still perform and look and appear to be happy even under forced circumstances right and continue to do tours and shows even if she didn't want to or even if she originally didn't want to and so we also see that there's a lot of luck on her side so in terms of jupiter being in this gate 48 where we see jupiter over here on the unconscious side right unconscious jupiter in gate 48 and so her personal law jupiter is what represents that personal law you know what we need to lead into in order to unlock that growth that expansion that luck that prosperity in our lives and for her it's that depth so she's someone who's always digging deep to master her craft she's this person that um you know has, has that potential to investigate and again she's also a first line but she has that ability to get depth in the things that she is committing her energy to right to master her craft and this is what leads her and this is what has led her to that growth and expansion in her life and the success that she has in her career and that she's had to date and i really hope that you know we still continue to see britney grow and expand through and beyond what she you know even the the hardships that she's had right um we also see that she's got the 1156 over here so a design of the seeker uh, it's a channel of curiosity this is the side of her that's that storyteller right it's that ability to stimulate the minds of others through her stories through her words through her ideas and sharing her beliefs um, and perhaps through her music as well right so maybe she t she's someone that shares her stories through her music stimulates the minds of others through her music right and even though she didn't write all of her songs um you know there are people that did that stuff for her there were some that were very very impactful very very powerful uh in terms of the ones that she did write so i don't know if you remember the song every time but this was her first kind of ballad that became a hit single at least as far as from what i remember or at least like one of the first songs that were like ballads as opposed to those pop like high energy types of songs and it's something that was rumored to kind of be this apology to her ex like it was about her and justin justin timberlake when they were together um but she actually you know and i'm kind of trying to relate this back to storytelling but she wrote a memoir recently forget what the memoir is called but anyway she wrote a memoir recently and she revealed in this memoir that um she was pregnant in two, in year 2000 right with justin's baby and so in the music video we actually see a scene where she you know there's a woman giving birth and all of that stuff and you know people didn't understand why or why this made sense but uh, i think what people are trying to tie together is that this is her kind of explaining that this song was actually about um that abortion that she had to get because you know she didn't want to but i guess like because justin wasn't ready to be a father at that time um she was really affected by it right she was she had to make a decision that she basically didn't want to do personally but i guess for her that was right for her at the time and so it's speculated now that this song was actually an ex you know speaking about her actual experience right um and speaking of experience in the memoir oh okay so the memoir is called the woman in me okay and so kind of going back to this memoir this was like huge hit sold 1.1 million copies in that first week of sale in the us and this book i feel like is that manifestation of this channel of curiosity right it's that manifestation of this channel this you know gift of being able to share story and share ideas in stimulating ways because this channel is all about taking ideas it's all about um taking that wisdom from experience and turning them into sources of inspiration and stimulation for others right so we see all of this kind of being channeled into this memoir for everyone to read and to learn from as well right maybe even connect to people that might be 
going through similar challenges that she has in some way, shape or form. And so lastly, when we look at her design, we see this single definition, right? So someone that's very independent, um, very autonomous. Uh, we also see this single definition design is powered by this channel of power right over here. So the 3457, and this is a design of an archetype. This is that pure potential power to respond to her in intuition in the moment, right? She's someone that is here to follow that response, follow that intuition in the moment. It's the core of Brittany's sacral response. This is what she can rely on to make those trustworthy decisions, um, healthy decisions, reliable decisions. And this is her inner GPS that's what leads her to that success and that satisfaction and that fulfillment in this lifetime. And so she has this strong intuition basically that tells her what's good for her in the moment, um, what's healthy for her in the moment. This is how she generates that sustainable sacral energy when she's intuitively re responding to you know situations as they happen in order for her to be the most healthy she can be in order for her to have the best well-being. And um, in other words, yeah, just to be healthy, right? Her, her body, her spleen knows what's healthy for her and what's not. And it's always guiding her to what's going to lead her into the future in the most safe, in the most um, empowering way. Because this channel is also all about self-empowerment, right? It's all about personal power. And so it's really, really important for people with this channel to actually listen and take action according to what your intuition tells you is right for you, right? Your response is linked up to your um, health system. And so what you do, how you channel that life force energy is directly tied to your health in that way. And so there is this need for Brittany to be a little bit selfish here, right? To connect to what it is that is correct for her. Because when you do have this channel of power that connects your sacral to your splenic center, like I said, your, your life force is connected to your health center. You have this intuition as to what's good for you and what's not. It's really not ideal for you to let your life be run by someone else to making your own decisions. And so unfortunately for a long time, for these 13 years, Brittany didn't even have that opportunity to lean into to this intuition and to, to act on this. And I feel like that was probably like, it did, it probably did so much damage to her system, to her mental health, to her, to her physical health. And we saw that manifest in so many, uh, in like her, her outbursts that she had, or her, maybe not outbursts, but like, um, maybe it was like her, basically her outbursts, her, uh, I don't know if there's another word for it. Uh, if I come up with it, I'll, I'll say it later, but yeah, like we've just seen Brittany go through so many mental health problems and very public for that matter. Uh, anyways, so it's really interesting for me to see here that the 57 is activated by Saturn, right? Her conscious Saturn. So Saturn is that teacher. It's where we're here to learn discipline. It's where, um, you know, there's something for us, some lesson that we're here to learn, right? And so gate 57 is that gate of intuition. And so there's some kind of lesson here around learning to follow and listen to her intuition, right? This is what she's here to learn. Otherwise she might suffer some kind of consequences, whether mentally, physically, et cetera. And that, you know, this can lead her to burnout. It can lead her to frustration. It can lead to a lot of other health issues. Okay, so we also see the unconscious Venus in 57 as well. And so she's someone that might have strong values around her intuition or represent what, you know, Venus can also represent our standards for relationships and what we need in relationships. So gate 57 can represent, or sorry, having Venus activate gate 57 can re represent um, needing this relationship that allows her to express this intuition, but also because the gate 57 is in the splenic center, it's all about health. It's all about our um, survival awareness. You know, maybe this also represents needing relationships that are healthy, that are stable, that are secure. Um, but also again, being able to express this intuition, act on her own, you know, have her own personal power, um, act on her intuition, having that space will bring her the most optimal environment for a relationship, right? That's 
also healthy, stable, and secure for her. And so this energy, again, this intuition can sense also what relationships are good for her and what's not. And it's really, really important for her to follow this intuition and not ignore this because, um, again, this intuitive awareness through this 57 is what can lead to better health and well-being for her, for her going into the future in her life. At the same time, on the other side of this channel, we have the gate 34. This is the gate of power, and this is tied to that, you know, personal life force power, the power to follow your own ambition, or sorry, your own intuition and follow your own individual path that leads to self-empowerment, right? Her response lies here, and she's here to really embrace it and follow it. But like I said before, the sad thing about Britney's story is that her personal power was pretty much taken away from her over the 13 years of this involuntary, this forced conservatorship. And we can see through, you know, a lot of the openness in Britney's design here that she's left pretty vulnerable and susceptible to others who try to control her, right? So with her open head center right here, um, even though she has all the head activations in her design, she's still someone that can be very impressionable and might get distracted by a lot of things that don't matter. You know, it might influence her to doubt herself, to maybe doubt her response. And we can see gate 63, gate of doubt, which might cause a lot of a certain level of self-doubt at times in what she believes in, right? In certain areas, in certain arenas of her life. Like I know as a pop star, she's very confident. She may, you know, she knows she's good at what she does. And so she doesn't doubt herself there, but you know, going from being this teen and into adulthood, it's like she never even had that chance to develop that autonomy for herself. So maybe she doubts the decisions or will start to doubt the decisions that she makes now that she has this level of freedom, right? And so we also see this open G center here. So this is someone who's, first of all, adaptable and, you know, is going to have very many different twists and turns and directions in their life. And especially with all of her directional gates open here. At the same time, she's someone that needs the freedom to sample different directions, right? Sample different directions in life and see what she's responding to, right? Follow her response in terms of the direction that she's in at any moment in time. And so this is how she finds her most empowering and her most satisfying direction for her, the place for her, at least at this point in her life, right? Um, one of the biggest challenges that we can see for these people though, is that at least for people with open G centers is that when someone else comes into their life and tries to fix their direction in one way, you know, doesn't allow them that autonomy, that space to follow their own direction, right? It might even cause a lot of frustration when they feel like they need to follow someone's direction and not take off and go on their own direction, right? This for them can feel very suffocating and very, very frustrating, you know, in Brittany's case. And we can see that actually manifest in her life through the conservatorship right? Her dad was controlling every aspect of her decision-making. Um, and it started off as something that was supposedly supposed to be temporary. And then they wanted to file for it to be a permanent conservatorship, which I think would have been crazy, you know, <laughs> for someone that's an adult that has the capacity to work. There's no, I mean, I obviously don't know all the behind the scenes parts of it but from what we do know they're like for me it just doesn't make any sense for her to be on that to be under a conservatorship um but yeah like based on their argument that she supposedly lacked the capacity to do things for herself even though she was in the right mind to work even though she did go on tour and did like pretty much from a to z do her whole residency, like do the dances, do the performances, et cetera, et cetera. That for me shows she was more than capable. And to me, this conservatorship was just straight up abuse and exploitation. It's hard for me to see it any other way. So I really, really feel for her and I cannot imagine what this might've been like to, you know, she's a fellow Sagittarius as well, right? We're here to be kind of like free spirits and, and travel and have adventures. and 
she's someone that didn't have that freedom to do what she desired in life and especially in the most formative years right in the most exciting years supposed to be of her lives um, before we start to settle down and you know make these changes and maybe settle into a certain path right and so when Brittany doesn't even have the opportunity to respond correctly it's no wonder why she had a lot you know a ton of health issues manifest for her especially those mental health issues that i mentioned earlier she fought for years to have this conservatorship removed basically or you know i don't know what, what the term is but i feel like she knew in her gut that it was toxic and so she fought for years it's like she was censored through her social media she was censored in so many different ways so even though she knew how bad it was even though i think she was like trying to cry for help in some of the documentaries that she did as well during this conservatorship um no one really could just swoop in and save her like the whole system was basically against britney uh it, and it took 13 years for it to finally start to change and so i don't know i also see here her emotional center is almost completely open right and so people with open emotional centers have this not self strategy of avoiding truth and confrontation and maybe even um avoiding speaking their truth and avoiding setting certain boundaries because they're sensitive to taking in other people's emotions and perhaps maybe taking in um other people's uncomfortable reactions to how what what it is that they're trying to express and what it is that they're trying to say and so they develop this coping mechanism of emotional avoidance in difficult situations in fact james her dad so james spears was apparently this like very scary father figure like everyone was intimidated by him everyone was scared of him no one wanted to confront him no one wanted to fight against him and so she was reported as being extremely scared of her, of her father right and so she avoided this truth avoided speaking her truth avoided this whole confrontation for i don't know how many years like i feel like she was trying to confront it this whole time but i also feel like actually if you see the documentary i don't know there's a new documentary on netflix but it was basically saying that there were times where she would try to fight for um a new lawyer but then later on kind of repeal it i don't know if that's the right word but basically take back that request and so there were times where it's like she would take steps towards fighting it and then kind of take it back because something might something would have happened maybe she was threatened or you know something else happened behind the scenes where she just stopped confronting it she stopped fighting cuz she maybe for her emotionally it was a lot it's a lot for her system to have to deal with that um and so yeah i think it was also said that she was intimidated she was threatened by her management if she didn't do her shows like if she refused to do any of these shows and so again this emotional center this undefined emotional center could have stopped her from fighting and standing up for herself so much sooner right or stopped her from continuing to 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 get the support that she needed and get the help that she needed to to end the conservatorship a lot sooner than it actually had been right and so now you know she's an adult woman she's 42 years old and her uranus opposition so in other words her astrological midlife or midpoint in life is officially marked in august um 2025 so we actually see a lot of major life shifts around the time leading up to the uranus opposition which is why this time in life so again she's going through the shift right now so this is why this period of of life is often referred to as her midlife crisis um or just midlife crisis in general but it's basically this space this void this time to kick us in the right direction or to help us mature right to help us kick us off in the direction of the next um chapter of our life basically and to, again to help us grow and mature and so we've definitely seen this big shift in Britney's case with finally breaking free from the conservatorship after all these years like 13 years is a really long time and so they officially the court finally ruled in her favor on November 2021 in November 2021 and so yeah it's like now that she's made the shift she's like going through her uranus opposition it just so happened 
that her freedom was newly granted, kind of like towards the beginning of this nodal shift, the beginning of this second part of her life. And so we're gonna see so many new things happening for Brittany. Um, and you know, our basically our path or our environment and stage that we're living in, so to speak, is shown by our nodes in our design. I don't know if you can hear that alarm, but anyways, we'll try to ignore it. So generally we start seeing the themes of the South Node in our life and then we move on into the north node in the second half of our life and so again around the time of the uranus opposition um that's when we shift from that south to that north node and so i just quickly wanted to state that because i wanted to point something out in her chart here but we see here that her unconscious north node is that gate of stimulation that we were talking about right and so it's interesting for me to see that her second half of life is marked by her telling stimulating stories through her memoir, right? So maybe she's going to take this, ne this next part of her life to share her story, to inspire others. Um, maybe not necessarily move away from music, maybe so. But, you know, I feel like there's still so much more that um, is coming for Britney. And we can also see this as a good sign because when you see your nodes, you know you're in the right place. And so her being able to share her stories, um, if she's seeing this this whole like environment of stimulation, of, of storytelling around her, then that's a pretty good sign that I think she's on the right path, right? Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be storytelling, but it's just this stimulation, right? Ideas. Um, and I do seriously wish Brittany all the best in like health and wealth, happiness in this second half of her life. And also, so looking at her profile, like it's no surprise to me that she's a 5-1 profile. And when she was at the height of her fame, she was seen to be this like young and seductive pop star and had this it factor, like I said before, that I would attribute to the mystery and the unconventionalness of that fifth line. Um, you know, she's someone that's received the brunt of everyone's projections, basically. And so she's someone who's also deeply investigated and mastered her craft as an artist, at least. And this is what pushed her into becoming an authority in the pop industry, pop music industry, and also in becoming an icon for women's empowerment, right? When we see the fifth line, it has the potential to influence the masses, to influence on this grand scale. And so we've seen her do that and really live that part of her design out. And at the same time, being on the left angle cross of identification here, right? That's her incarnation cross. Her conscious sun is in gate nine, the gate of focus. And so her life's work or her life's purpose is to really like identify and to focus what detail, what skills, what um, relationships bring her satisfaction in life to identify those things. And that's where she's meant to invest her energy. That's where she's meant to experience this theme of satisfaction in her life as a generator, right? And this is what's going to lead her to that personal fulfillment. This is what's going to lead her to the, the, the satisfaction that she's searching for in her life. But part of her challenge in this lifetime we see is learning that discernment through doubt, through that confusion, right? And learning to ignore all the distractions that are going on around her instead, and you know, instead focus on what really matters, focus on the skills, on the things that really matter. And that is what is going to allow her to really like unravel and experience maximum satisfaction in her life. We also see her, her incarnation crosses in that quarter of mutation, right? The gate nine is in the quarter of mutation. It's in December. And so we see that her purpose is fulfilled through her personal transformation. You know, going from frustrated and powerless to satisfied and powerful, right? Taking back her power. This is the stage. This is that, that new chapter that's opening up for Brittany. And we're really going to start seeing that a lot more, hopefully. Um, because I feel like this is just the beginning for her. This is the beginning of a new and empowered chapter for Brittany. Um, and it's gonna be through her sacral, sacral response that's gonna guide her to what that next step is, right? It's gonna be the key to unlocking that 
path of least resistance. It's going to be that key to unlocking more satisfaction and well-being in her life and the key to guiding her towards what is ideal and right and correct for her to focus on at this point in her life. And now that she's really regained this freedom to make her own decisions, I really hope that we get to see her learn and grow and do more of what's good for her. I really want to see her be a little bit more selfish at this point in her life, do what she needs to do that will bring her that better health and that personal happiness, right? And so I think that's pretty much it for today, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think is coming next for Brittany and what else you see for her in her new chapter. You know, will she be focusing on music? Will she be focusing on her health, her family, you know, maybe writing a new book? And yep, and you know, if you like these videos, if you want us to do another chart dive, let me know in the comments who you'd like to see as well. Um, you know, if you like this, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and that's pretty much it for today. So with that said, have an amazing day or evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next chart dive video. Bye.